a gaming console who can play all your retro games inside an SNES controller. Hey, how is going Adam here? Today we're gonna build a retro console inside an SNES controller with the help of a Raspberry Pi Zero. The links with all the items we're gonna be in the video description. So let's get started. First, let's start modifying the controller. I use an aftermarket one which you can find it for as cheap as $5. Also, if you want, you can use an original one. I took it apart unscrewing the 5 screws on the back and removed the initial PCB. We're gonna need to remove the left and the right shoulder button PCB in order to attach it to our controller. Keep them safe, we're gonna do that later. With the help of a clamp, remove the plastic bits in order to make room for the PCB and the Pi Zero. Some trial and error might be needed to get it just right. I also had to open up the hole for the cable just a little bit. The most important piece of our build is this bottom PCB from PRS Tech which will allow us to connect the Raspberry Pi to it. Links will be in the video description. I pre-tinned it and in order to connect the Raspberry Pi, I used this pin header on which I trimmed the top just enough to be flush with the Pi. Now carefully solder it down, start with a couple of pins and check the alignment. If you are happy, solder it completely. Now it's time to add the Pi. I used Raspberry Pi W which has Wi-Fi built in, allowing me to SSH and do all the configuration later when it's connected to my network. Just place it over the pins and carefully solder it down. Keep in mind to not touch the pie for a long period with your soldering tip, you will risk burning the PCB to the point that you will fry it. Now we will need the left and right PCBs that we removed earlier and connect two wires to each one of them so we can solder them to the PCB. Now we are pretty much done so we are gonna start putting everything together. But lastly we need to solder a jumper wire from PP20 to pin 2 of the Pi Zero GPIO header. This will carry 5 volts from the HDMI connector to the rest of the Pi. With all that done, it's time to install RetroPie on our SD card. I used SD card formatter to format it and Win32 Disk Imager to write the ISO to the Pi. Make sure that you download the latest version of RetroPie to make sure that everything is compatible. With that done, we can insert the card back and add our HDMI cable. We need the thinnest cable possible. These are hard to find, but I found that this one works like a charm, so I'll drop some links in the description. Just make sure that fits and we are ready to power it up. But first, we need to set up the buttons. For the in-depth guide on how to set up the GPIO inputs, I will drop a link in the description. You will need to use FTP and SSH in order to make it work, so you might need an adapter like this one to connect your keyboard into the Pi. Now I can put everything together and my new toy is done. But before I can plug it into my display, we're gonna need this adapter which will provide 5 volts to your Pi Zero using the HDMI 5 volts wire. The normal HDMI specs is only 50 mA. That is why this adapter is needed to provide more current for the Raspberry Pi. If you will want to use it with a smart TV, you need to make a modification to the adapter. We need to carefully take it apart and solder this diode. We're gonna need to solder the ends here and here. After that is done, just put it back together. Once modified, do not use this adapter with anything else. All that is remaining now is to plug the HDMI in our adapter and plug it into a display or a TV and hope for the best. This thing took me around 2 hours to make and I can't be more happy with it. You can't tell the difference between this and a normal controller. And that was it, a nice way of bringing the life back into an old controller. If you liked the video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to check out some of my other ones. My name is Adam and I'm gonna see you next one.